Could it be that the entire universe is nothing more than just an atom? When you look at a diagram of an atom, which is a building block for all matter, you can see that some examples of the universe repeat. Our solar system is a great example of that. There's a giant central star and a couple of smaller planets that circle around it. You can observe the same arrangement outside our galaxy, too, with exoplanets orbiting their stars. And you can also witness that principle on a smaller scale. It's the way particles, called protons and neutrons, move around the center of an atom, which is called the nucleus. So, imagine you have a bunch of positive magnets you're trying to stack together. They keep pushing each other away, right? That's what's supposed to be happening with the protons in an atom. They're all positively charged, so they should be repelling each other and flying off in all directions. But atoms do exist, so there must be something holding them together. And that something is called the strong interaction or strong force. The nucleus makes up less than one hundredth of a percent of the volume of the whole atom. But it usually takes up over 99.9% of the mass of the atom. Once again, similar to our sun. Anyway, this strong interaction is like a special type of glue that holds the protons and neutrons together in the nucleus of an atom. In a similar way, gravity prevents us from flying away from the ground into the darkness of space. Now, this glue comes from some really smart particles inside protons and neutrons called quarks. These little guys have a strange kind of charge called color. It's not like the colors we see around us. It works like a code that helps quarks stick together inside their host particles. And this code also seeps out and helps hold protons and neutrons together in the nucleus. In a way, quarks are like little builders that are working together to build atoms that make up everything around us. The Big Bang was said to be a magnificent moment when we got time and space. It's the story we use to explain the evolution of the universe. In the beginning, there was only a very, very small ball of matter the size of a peach, but with a temperature of more than a quadrillion degrees. Ow, that's hot! And this bang in the name doesn't mean there really was an explosion in space. This peach started spreading around, and space was just appearing everywhere. It gave rise to atoms, molecules, stars, and many celestial bodies that filled the empty space of our cosmos. Basically, all the elements that make us formed within a few minutes at the earliest stages of the universe. Let's say like a hundredth of a billionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. Oh wait, Mm -hmm. give me a second to process that. Alright, moving on. The growth was incredible at that stage. The universe spread exponentially and managed to double in size at least 90 times. Like me during the holidays. (laughs) I love chocolate. After the Big Bang, the universe was a hot and dense soup of particles, too hot for atoms to exist. But 380,000 years later, it cooled down enough for electrons to mix with nuclei and form atoms. This is a process we called recombination, and it's what made the universe transparent. Think of it like turning on a light switch. Suddenly, you can see it all. But just because the universe became transparent didn't mean it was bright. It was a dark period, as there were no stars or galaxies yet. Like a big empty canvas waiting for something to be painted on it. It wasn't until much later, as the universe continued to evolve, that stars and other bright objects started to form and light up the darkness. And it went on evolving, all the while filling up with planets, asteroids, galaxies, and other things. Okay, so that's the story we've been told for the past couple of decades. And a pretty good one, I should admit. Scientists have studied it so much, they observed the leftover electromagnetic radiation from the young universe. They measured the presence of the lightest elements only to realize they all line up with the story of the Big Bang. New theories don't say the Big Bang didn't happen. It's a good picture of the cosmos in its early stages, but it's like an unfinished puzzle with some important parts missing. We can't explain what happened before the Big Bang using our current physics. So we need some new math to explain tricky parts, like the so-called singularity. It's the point of infinite density, remember? From the beginning of the Big Bang. And that's where string theory comes in, like a super-powered toolkit that can handle gravity and all other forces combined. Now, one of the ideas that string theory has given us is the ekpyrotic universe. 
Imagine a big fire that sparks off another fire, and that fire sparks off another fire, and so on. Well, in this scenario, the Big Bang wasn't the beginning of everything. It was just one part of a bigger process. It's the idea of the cyclic universe, a never-ending roller coaster ride with big bangs as beginnings and big crunches as ends happening over and over again, potentially forever. It's like the universe is constantly hitting the reset button and does it in a really fun way. We could look at this singularity, according to some theories, as a single particle in a much larger system, much like an atom is made up of subatomic particles. And considering all that, the idea says every nucleus of an atom could have a universe inside of it. So our entire universe is just a tiny part of an atom in a much larger universe made of atoms with more cosmoses, with more atoms and more cosmoses. Hmm, so twisting. The early versions of the idea of the cyclic universe still had one big issue. They didn't match up with our observations of the cosmic microwave background, which is a fossil light that shows how the universe looked when it was only 380,000 years old. So, in March 2020, two physicists from Canada published a study that revealed the math behind the cyclic universe that we missed earlier. If we focus on the moment when the universe shrinks to an incredibly small point and then bounces back to a big bang state, we might be able to match up with our observations after all. It's just that we need to wait for more new experiments to fully test the idea. The Grand Unified Epoch that's what we call the time when the universe was still young. At that time, matter and antimatter, which are like mirror images of each other, existed in roughly equal amounts. But since they are opposing forces, when they come into contact with each other, they destroy each other in a powerful explosion, like fireworks. This means that even though matter and antimatter were constantly created and destroyed, somehow there was always a little more matter than antimatter. Which is good because, otherwise, we wouldn't have anything left. As time went on, particles started to stick together and form more complex things, like atoms and molecules. And eventually, stars formed and created even heavier elements. But someday, a long, long time from now, all those stars will burn out. When the last star slowly cools and fades away, The universe will turn into a dark void without life, light, or anything we know and assume there is. At some point, voracious black holes will eat all matter in space. Eventually, even those black holes will evaporate away into the tiniest amount of light. Our cosmos will continue to expand. The light will become spread out and unable to interact with anything. So, all activity in the universe will stop. Space will become a vast, empty void with no stars, planets, or anything else and will end there. Or just begin. And maybe that's where we'll meet again. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.